My freshman year of college, I took this social activism themed writing class and one day we had a speaker come in who talked to us about Ebonics and some of its grammar rules. Uh, mostly though, the point was that like said grammar rules existed at all and that a lot of the perceptions of Ebonics are steeped in racist bullshit. I don't actually remember this talk all that well, but I do remember that it happened because it was one of those rare, fantastic learning moments where you feel some idea or value or thing that seems so solid to you just shaken to its very fucking core. I still love those moments because they are important reminders that there are things to learn everywhere and if I'm not learning, it's because I'm not paying attention. I basically majored in sociology for that reason. Uh, college was just four years of learning that everything that I took as given in the world was not and was actually ridiculously fraught and complicated. Anyway, my younger self, the self that walked into that classroom that day, had always been kind of a grammar snob. I love the English language and all of its weird complicated rules and its equally bizarre collection of sounds. It's not an inherently very pretty language, but people do very beautiful things with it and I love that. I love thinking about why the serial comma is so goddamn important and that we have so many words about words. But this particular classroom moment kind of called all of my grammar elitism into question. Mostly it showed me that my linguistic prescriptivism had this gate keeper effect that was shitty for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the way that it disproportionately impacts the already marginalized. Shifting focus a little bit, fast forward to a year ago when I was pulled into a wedding invitation argument about the use of o'clock. After decisively insisting that 4.30 o'clock was unacceptable bullshit, I then spent the rest of my evening falling down this rabbit hole of reading all the grammar blogs ever. While I loved every minute of inane analysis of etymology and taste, I was reminded all the while, as I often am when questions of high stakes grammar come up, that I actually kind of hate all of this. There's this very fine line between like fun linguistic geekery and dickbag pedantry. And I think that distinction is largely made by whether or not you can keep sight of the fact that all of this is invented and constructed by people. Dictionaries, for example, present themselves as objective reality, but that's a facade. That's a big part of their jam as cultural artifacts, but no matter how effectively they present themselves as like preordained, they are still written by human beings. I assume very smart human beings who put a lot of time and effort into their study of etymology and usage. I'm not saying that dictionaries are wholly arbitrary, but neither are they immutable objective fact. Grammar rules, at least in American English, which is all I can comfortably speak to, are even less official and more constructed. There are plenty of style guides that have varying opinions on the serial comma, and while I am of the opinion that arguments in favor of it vastly outweigh those against, both exist and have merit and are correct. Kidding. All arguments against a serial comma are baseless and stupid. Language exists to communicate, and I don't mean that in a strictly boring utilitarian sense, like art is communication too. And yeah, in some ways the presence of rules makes it much easier to do that effectively. The presence of rules also allows art to do interesting things around the contours of rules or just dismantling them entirely. But above all else, it seems to me at least, that we should be using language to explore our world more thoroughly and connect with each other more deeply. There is a level of pedantic nonsense that kind of loses sight of the actual ideas contained within a sentence that maybe strays outside a particular set of lines. Worse still though, there is a version that shapes ideas about other people in potentially very dangerous ways. A dogmatic adherence to language as a fixed object is ludicrous because it ignores the entire history of language, but it's also problematic because it can establish a hierarchy of humanity wherein usage becomes tied to someone's value and worth as a human being. Language usage communicates all sorts of ideas that are not actually particularly reliable indicators of someone's ability to make meaningful contributions. And also fixating on a particular understanding of the rules kind of restricts language's ability to evolve. For me, at least, the fluidity of language is one of the most exciting things about it and whether a particular usage is an aberration or evolution is mostly a question of perspective. And in addition to all the ways that a fixation on a singular set of rules is sociopolitically harmful, it also often just seems like a really asinine policing of someone else's self-expression, which is just a shitty thing to do on a basic human level. So what I'm really saying here is that if you want to print 430 o'clock on your wedding invitations because that o'clock is aesthetically pleasing to you, then you do you. Got him. Got him. Nailed it.